Hello and welcome. This is the recording of the Wisdom Factory Relationship Series, Stop the Relationship, Grow Your Relations. And we are in episode five, Same-Sex Relationships with Jeff Salzman and Kelly Böhler. We have had some glitches with this episode and the YouTube video came out with five minutes without audio. And that's why we do this recording for you to give you the introduction. Hello, I'm uh, Mark Davenport. And I'm Heidi Hörnlein. And welcome <laughs> to the Wisdom Factory Forum. It's a forum for people who uh, have experienced knowledge and wisdom that they want to share with the world. And we've been doing this for more than a year now, and we've had uh, several series. One series was called Wisdom Technologies, another was called Conversations That Matter. And we've had occasional community gatherings as well. And you, by the way, are invited to join us for the community gatherings and also to join us at the BLABS, which we regularly hold after the session. We're interested in raising consciousness and spreading the wisdom of integral theory and to show how it is used in practice. Uh, we are coaches and counselors presently working on relationships for the second half of life. And that second half of life includes us. <laughs> yes, for sure. <laughs> and this is now a 12-part series about wisdom in relationships. And we have invited 14 experts who are operating inside the integral worldview. And today we have same-sex relationships. First of all, we have Jeff Salzman, who uh, worked with Ken Wilber for three years building the Integral Institute. He's a co-founder of Career Track, which was uh, one of the world's leading professional development companies. Uh, he's a longtime spiritual practitioner in many traditions. He has a master's degree in Indo-Tibetan Buddhism from Naropa University. And Jeff has uh, spent the last few years as a co-founder and a lead teacher at Boulder Integral, now known as the Integral Center. And these days he travels, teaches, and comments about current events on Integral Life and the Daily Evolver, which we never miss. No, we never miss that, and you should never miss it too, because Jeff really gives you the overview of what is happening in the world from a such a perspective that we begin to understand it. And now let's go to Kelly Berry. Mm -hmm. She is a Master of Arts, a professional counselor specializing in individual and group therapy and a heart-centered hypnotherapy. She maintains a private practice in Boulder, Colorado, and she has worked with Ken Wilber, too, and in the Integral Institute. So yes. they are really experts in their professions, in what they are doing, and in integral theory. And so she made a bit of a name for herself as one of the integral chicks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and now we just lead over into what was left from the audio and enjoy the video from now on. Thank you. <laughs> and I had had maybe, I don't know, I, I don't know when I, I, I think I ran in the, uh, up from Eden in the mid-80s. So mm -hmm. I spent a long time as a, you know, on my own with integral theory, shoving Ken Wilber books down people's throats, you know, <laughs> and being very lonely in the whole scene. It was, I couldn't believe my luck that I could be part of the integral scene in Boulder and actually help start it. And, and now, you know, there's an integral movement, you know, it's, there's a worldwide movement and, you know, I could say that I wish it was bigger and growing faster and all of that good stuff, but it's there. And that's the fruit of, you know, the work that we did and other people, and I'm very happy about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is great. Yeah. yeah. 
So today we are talking about same-sex relationships and who is following Jeff. He, he, you, you know that he is talking often about uh, gay uh, laws now and gay marriage and so on. So it's a very uh, dear topic to you, Jeff. And so yeah. I would like to ask you to uh, introduce a little bit the history of same-sex Relationships. You, know, you have to begin. You have to begin at beige at the infrared. Yeah. Though. No, I'll begin before that in the animal kingdom. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, well, that's, it's one of the things that. Well, it's one of the things that integral helps us to understand. Is you know one of the sort of basic tenets of integral theory is that um, there's an evolution not just in terms of our bodies and cells and molecules and all of that good stuff but also in terms of consciousness and culture. And so we can see that the evolution of culture can be actually understood. One of, the, one of the great examples of the evolution of cultures is how people who are gay, you know, to use a more modern word, were integrated into these worlds. And so I actually would start in the animal kingdom where same-sex um, relationships or same-sex activity is all over the animal kingdom. And so I think we can be um, pretty sure that in the beige uh, archaic stage of development that, you know, it was there. You know, we don't know that for a fact, but we do know once you get to tribal stage of development, the magenta in, in Ken's um, uh, altitudes or the purple meme in spiral dynamics that uh, same-sex relationships and a same-sex category was accepted in you know North American tribes and tribal c cultures all over the place we would they were often referred to as the third sex um, so these would be unmarried men unmarried women uh, there's a lot of theory about how that was adaptive because these would be sort of the uncles and aunts uh, that would help take care of the children, and they, they served a, a part of the niche of the tribe. By the time you get into red warrior stage of development, this is the stage where, you know, this comes online with agriculture and, you know, larger social structures, and um, this is pre-law. It's pre-moral in a way. Mm -hmm. People were not, did not have guilt, but they did have shame. You know, this is an interesting stage of development. And, of course, um, the, the, the basic engine of that stage is might is right. So this is where the male patriarchy took over, and there was still same-sex relationships. If we think of the highest level of red um, culture would be uh, Rome, um, mm -hmm. Greece in a certain way, certainly in terms of, uh, you know, same-sex relationships. And um, particularly, I don't know so much about how it would be with, with same-sex females, but with males, it was definitely a power structure. So the, yeah. the, the, the person doing the penetrating would be in the mm -hmm. power position. And so mm -hmm. you'd have boys and slaves. And, um, and then once you get into the, the traditional stage of development, or amber, blue, and spiral dynamics, at this point, um, sh uh, guilt does come online, and we have these monotheistic teachings, and you have this sort of horrible sour spot in history, and we see it now, and this is where you have basically the holy warrior. It's still a warrior, but it's a holy warrior now. So there, you know, the, the book, the Bible, the Koran, all of these are, you know, same-sex relationships at this point were seen as corrupting, uh, we're seen as, seen as feminizing the culture. Uh, and so at this stage of the game, this is where it gets really ugly for, for homosexuals. And so at this stage, homosexuality is a capital crime. You're basically killed for it. And mm -hmm. we see this with ISIS, and we see this with you know the holy warriors to this day. As we move into um, traditional... Interrupt yeah. a moment, but this is mainly for men, isn't it? Do you know about women? I don't know as much. Uh, I don't know. I don't think. I don't know. I don't know. Can Kelly, you? if you know more about that than I do, I. I yeah. You know. I mean, I don't know much about like the history of women and and same-sex relationships uh, historically. 
I know mostly, you know, what Jeff's talking about because mostly it was, you know, men were in, in power and the attention was always on men. Yeah. And so naturally, um, you know, in, in, in the, heter the homosexual realm, the focus was mostly on, on men. I think women actually had the privilege of being able to take a, a, a back seat and kind of hide a little bit and not have to deal actually with um, those injustices. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, it was a, little, a lot more behind closed doors. Yeah. Um, so we got away with a lot more, I think, than men. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what you women did didn't matter. <laughs> well, at that stage, they were definitely second class citizens. Sure. And then we move into the traditional stage, and you know the traditional stage is still very much online in this world. Um, so we have um, these are the people protesting in Italy right now against same-sex relationships. These are the people protesting in our country, the, the religious conservatives, uh, right-wing Republicans, and um, you know when this stage was really um, you know back in the Middle Ages and 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 the early, even the early part of the country. Um, it, it's not quite a capital crime, but you would definitely be um, ostracized and thrown out of the system. And I, I think of my, um, actually my great uncle, who was very close to me when we were growing up and, uh, and close to our family. And we lived in this little town in western Pennsylvania, a little traditional town. We all went to church. You know, we were God-fearing Christians. And one day, he just basically had to leave town. Nobody really knows what happened. I don't, you know, it was something happened. But he was exposed, and he moved away. And we saw him. We would we'd go visit him. He moved to Florida, and he lived more openly there. This was during the 70s and 80s. There was a little bit of a niche for him there. Mm -hmm. uh, but he could no longer stay in our small town. And that's typical of, of the traditional stage. Then you move to the modernist stage, and the modernist stage is um, basically don't ask, don't tell. And this is where you have a, you know, a, a whole big strata of society to this day, where you know, it's, it's, it's sort of the, the world that I was in as I was an out gay man in, this, in the 70s and 80s and 90s even, where you know, I could be out, but Monday morning, you know, at, at work around the water cooler, nobody really wanted to hear about my weekend. <laughs> you know, not like they heard about each other's. Nobody wanted to hear about my relationships. Nobody asked me any questions. I would go back and visit my relatives back in Pennsylvania. They all knew, but I would never. Nobody just don't ask, don't tell. And mm -hmm. other than that, I was fine. I could. I went to every party. I went to the dinners. Everybody loved me. I loved them. But that was a. A area of my life that nobody talked about, yeah. and that's don't ask, don't tell. Mm -hmm. And then you get into green, and at this point, of course, at green, the whole project of green is to bring in the people who have been oppressed and marginalized, and to you know make them full citizens. So uh, at green, you know, homosexuality. If you're gay, you're like special. You're really you're celebrated. Awesome. It's, it's <laughs> you're fabulous. You know, <laughs> and, and, and that's great too. Oh, you know, everybody like, needs a gay friend, right? Absolutely, yeah. everybody needs a gay Everyone. friend, or you're not cool. And then, <laughs> so that's green, and we all know green. And God bless green. I'm, I'm, you know, it's astonishing actually when you consider the history of humanity that we would, after orange, move into a stage where it's about being nice, where it's about bringing in the people who have been hurt and, you know, marginalized and left out. I mean, it's really an amazing, astonishing achievement of humanity. But then you move into integral, and at integral, I mean, I think we're just figuring out what, what it is, but um, at integral, being gay is just another thing that's interesting about a person. You know, it's not something we avoid, it's not something we overvalue, it's not something we ignore, it's, it's just, wow, how interesting. And mm -hmm. at, at, at integral, and then we can talk a little bit about this, and Kelly, I'm going to hear your views too, is that, you know, it, gay and straight are, are just two huge categories that have all sorts of variations within them. You know, yeah. so you have bisexuality, you have Caitlyn Jenner, you have, the, I mean, at this point we're just, it's, it's almost like sexuality is blossoming to the point where we realize that everybody's sexuality is, is, is almost as unique as their face. <laughs> if you know what I mean, you know, we all just have a different. I always love the 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 line from Emerson where he says, "Every church 
has a congregation of one. <laughs> and it just, you know, we're all so unique. And that becomes what's interesting at Integral, I think. I'm, you know, I'm sort of theorizing here. But I'd stop there and, and see, Kelly, if you, you know, any of that yeah. sparked something in your experience. Just to talk about, totally, just to talk about the Integral level, yeah, I feel like we're still just figuring it out. And, and there is like a whole kind of red carpet to explore that, which is just so beautiful and yeah. so new and so yeah. revolutionary in that way. So, you know... We actually have a way. We actually are in a moment where we can we can kind of co-create what we want it to be, and that to me is so liberating, so much freedom, and um, it just helps me personally just have so much more acceptance about my sexuality in the world. Like I can mm -hmm. really just sink into it and not have it be, um, you know, this weird nebulous thing that I'm like always working with. You know, it's just a natural expression of who I am, and I kind of see it at the integral level. It's like. It's just another expression. It's another flavor. It's another typology. It's another way um, just to really engage the world. And it's really beautiful. And um, I think we're at a very exciting time to be gay. <laughs> yeah, I do too. And I'm very grateful. I never in a million years thought I'd see the day um, where we have gay marriage in, in the United States, for one thing. I mean, I, yeah. uh, back in the 90s when... You know, we had proposition. You know, we we had some. There was a thing in Colorado, proposition, whatever it was, that where uh, you the gays could be discriminated against in employment. That's still true, by the way, in a lot of states. You can be fired for being gay, and there's no legal consequence. That's sort of the last piece of the puzzle that has to be put in place. But it's really astonishing. And and Kelly, I'd ask you, um, did you grow up in you know, which of these levels would you say? Did you grow up in a traditionalist level too, or are you more modernist, or what was um, the scene for you? Yeah, I mean, I grew up in Massachusetts. Okay, um, more so, liberal. Yeah, so liberal, but um, during the, you know, I was born in 1977. I'm 38. Um, when I realized that I was attracted to women, I think I was about 14, um, so really young. And um, didn't do anything with it other than actually just date boys and have boyfriends and explore that whole realm. Um, and then when I was 16, I really, I was really into like really into women and really wanted to explore it. And um, and I had my first relationship, although albeit like completely secret, completely like in the closet, like completely in the shadow realms, to be honest, um, with a woman who was 19. So she was a bit older than me. Um, and it was exciting and scary and it totally like I was doing something wrong but there was some excitement in that like I was breaking the rules and um, and something about that felt just fun and good but I was also terrified completely just scared shitless for anyone to find out um, it was not accepted in my town it was you know as liberal as Massachusetts was at that time it was not it was it wasn't okay you know yeah. um, and basically, my my deep deep fear and my shame, like I was actually like my behavior was bad, my behavior was wrong. And at that time, I was um, I was raised Catholic, but very loosely. But at that time, I was really into looking for spiritual connection and trying to figure out the laws of the universe and like what does this all mean. And it was just at a very very early age, a lot of existential um, question and inquiry. And so I actually started going to church on my own just to find like some spiritual connection. My family didn't go to church. They're, you know, they're watching football on Sundays. I'm going but to you church. Went to Catholic church. Yeah, Catholic church. Uh -huh. And I'm being told how horrible I am for being gay. And I'm just, you know, it's devastating. So it was really this bipolar experience of like so much excitement and energy and like wanting to explore and like this frisky this friskiness with a little bit of mischievous energy like kind of mixed in there and then just this shame and this um, this terror of being found out and feeling like I would be kicked out of everything you know I was I was big and on the basketball team I played softball I played like every you know every sport and just feeling like I was gonna be just shunned from my town if anyone found out and um, I'm just terrified yeah um, to the point where I got really depressed and a little bit suicidal really yeah, yeah. it was really intense the oft told story among young gay people yeah, I had a I was suicidal. Um, it was really 
horrible, just a horrible um, kind of experience. And then after that, working through some of the more psychological issues around it, I um, when I came back in into dating in the world again, I started dating men because it was just too much. And I didn't date women again and for a couple more years until I went to college. Mm -hmm. And that's where I really came out, like, for real. <laughs> yeah. And, um... And so what was, age would that have been? That was... That was eight, I was 18. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I was 18. I had a boyfriend at the time who I was super into, but I also was just so attracted to women and, you know, being in, in college and play, and I, you know, I was playing, I was on the basketball team in college, I was on the softball team in college, I had a lot of access to other women uh, who were who were gay, lesbian, and who wanted to have fun and explore. And so I fell in love with my first woman when I was 18. Her name was also Kelly. We were both on the basketball team. And it was, um, it was so beautiful and so sweet to be able to like just sink into my essence and be okay with it. And I still wasn't fully okay with it because I ended up actually going to a Catholic school. So it was like, you know, it wasn't okay there, but there was tons of gay people everywhere. So yeah. we just kind of, it was kind of like don't, and it was the don't ask, don't tell thing. Like my basketball coach was like, I don't want to know, you know, it was kind of not okay, but everyone knew what was happening, and we just didn't really talk about it, so that's yeah. just a little bit of my journey, yeah. Yeah, and I just want to pause there for a minute, um, because this is the heartbreaking part of of being gay f in our generation. I, I'm 62, so I'm quite a bit older than Kelly. Um, but we both had similar um, experiences, particularly during the teenage years, which is a tender age. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. when your heart's opening and you're you're feeling the sexuality coming online, and you have to deny your basic essence. You can't talk about it with anybody. Um, you have mm -hmm. to pretend that you're somebody other than who you are, and that is a fucking tragedy. I'll tell you. Yeah. That is a, a that's a soul crushing. Uh, it, it can distort your whole being in a way that is. Um, I'm so glad that that's ending for these young how, for young people. How did you handle that? How did mm -hmm. you come out? I mean, you are not distorted or something. You are a yeah. high functional integral person. So you might you must have found a way, both of you, to 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 come through that. What happened? Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll, I'll just share mine real quickly because I I think part of it is typology, and this is where you know we're all sort of come out a little bit differently. I realized I was gay when I was uh, about 13 as well, Kelly, and I, I actually remember the moment. I I was washing the car mm. in my parents' driveway, and I set the bucket down, and I realized I'm a homosexual. I had read some book. I don't know, 13. I'd gotten some book out of the library, you know. And um, and I, I made two promises. One was that I would never act on it, and two, I would never tell anybody. Mm. And that was that's what I did, you know, for a few years. I actually came out when I was a freshman in college. Once I got out of town, uh, but um, uh, but I have to say that within myself, I didn't feel any shame. I, for some reason, it didn't get into my own interior identity. I knew mm -hmm. what society, I knew what I had to do, and I knew what the game was, and I knew I had to hide, and I could never come out. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was okay with it. I wouldn't know if I was okay with that, but I knew the deal. But I never once internalized it where I, I wanted it to change or anything like that. I've been with two long-term relationships, actually three, um, and um, with all with men, who had a very, very hard time with accepting it within themselves. For some reason, I was spared that. I think it's my Enneagram 5. You know, mm -hmm. it's just my own interior world had enough sort of coherence that I could somehow hold that together. I don't know. I haven't sorted all that out. But I'm grateful for that. Uh, and when I think of the what my, what my current boyfriend, you know, he didn't come out until he was 55 years old. Never had a relationship with a man, mm. and you know, uh, was willing to go to his grave until I came along. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, Kelly, what do you, you know? You 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 did have more of an internal struggle. It sounds like. 
Yeah, I really, I really did for and for a, quite a long time, even through um, my undergraduate years. Even when I moved to Boulder, I remember first moving to Boulder and um, still hiding. And I had been out for years and had many girlfriends and many yeah. nights of enjoyment <laughs> in that realm. <laughs> um, so, and it was like it was like I had to come out all over again when I moved to Boulder. You know, like every time, like every, I just felt like I went to college, I came out. Then I moved to Boulder. I felt like I had to come out again, and um, and I had still had a lot of shame, and I still had a lot of secrecy. And at that point, some people knew that I was gay, some people didn't, and I didn't really talk about it that much. I dated mm -hmm. people, um, but it was really just like kind of my inner circle that knew. Um, and in the integral scene, I, I noticed there weren't a lot of gay people around, and so it kind of brought back a lot of my um, teenage years growing up, like, oh, here I am again, you know, and, <laughs> like, where are the gays? Where's the integral gay? I just, you know, it was me. heartbreaking. <laughs> that was me. No, it's right. And, like, it, and also sort of a, a little bit macho, right? Yeah, a, lot of, yeah. a lot of men, you know, and, and Ken, you know, God yeah. bless Ken, but, you know, he has that whole macho thing. Yeah, so it was, it was a very, yeah, macho, um, a lot of a lot of the people in the community and the leaders were were men themselves, and just everyone was just so straight, you know, just yeah. so. That's <laughs> true. And um, hey, we still are. Come on, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some of us. I love it. I love all the flavors, but I'm just saying, like, it just being back in a community, just like, and and really kind of having the expectation that being gay was going to be a different a different kind of um, thing with with my integral friends, it just wasn't. And I had this whole romantic view of, of you know, what it was going to be like, and it just really wasn't. And so it threw me back into a lot of my um, growing up teenage years, um, and I had, I just had some shame to work through. And so what, then, what, 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 yeah, I was just going to say, what made the, the, the next move happen? Um, I just got more and more um, grounded and centered and okay with who I was as a person in every way. And that was just through a lot of spiritual practice, a lot of meditation um, with Gempa, a lot of retreats, a lot of uh, integral practice, a lot of shadow work. Um, I just did a lot of practices and a lot of work. And I just started accepting myself. And that's really where it starts, you know, like just full acceptance of who I was and the full acceptance of what my heart really wanted to um, blossom into with another person. And that was with a woman. And... Um, so the more I did practice and the more acceptance I had of myself, the more confident I was about my expression in the world. And then I just really enjoyed being gay. Like, I liked it. It was fun. I felt like it was a cool part of me. Um, and then the more I accepted it, I noticed, of course, the more the world around me accepted it, which is always a, a beautiful mirror to experience. And um, all my friends accepted it, and it was great. It was just kind of normal. It just kind of slowly started to normalize for me. Um, to the point where I'm like so out, have I don't have any shame, and I think it's I'm so happy I'm gay. I'm actually happy that I'm not straight. <laughs> like I love it. <laughs> Me too. That's, That's wonderful. So it's true. I, and it, I often think about that. Why am I happy I'm gay? Why would I choose it all over again? Uh, and the reason is because it's me. Exactly. You know, that's it's yeah. as simple as that. And yeah. you wonderful. know, hallelujah. <laughs> so can I ask you, what is is there a difference? And if yes, what is the difference? As far as you know, I mean, you have uh, seen many straight relationships around you, and you see what is happening there. Is is it different in same-sex relationships? What is different? What is not? Kelly, what compared to? I've been thinking about that question ever since you wrote me to be on this series because it's it's. In one way, it's really it's just interesting. It's like, is there a difference? Do we need to make that distinction? Aren't relationships just relationships, and they go through the same kind of relationship arc? Um, so I think that's true. You know, just something funny I was thinking about this morning is like, for for women, women to women relationships, it's like we don't really need birth control. That's awesome. You know, <laughs> like, that's a difference. Yeah. Um, but really, I think, you know. I haven't been in a straight relationship for about 20 years, so it's really hard to compare. But um, and when I was, I was so young, um, and I'm, I'm sure there's very subtle differences. But you know, when you have two same bot, the physical level, the body level, 
when you have two same bodies come together, I mean, there's a difference there between having, you know, two opposite bodies coming together. And so there's an energetic component that I feel is different. Um, I don't know how it's different. I just feel that it, it is different just from that basic, you know, just at the physical level. Um, I think... Can I, think, I ask you something? Yeah. Because we yeah. women often complain that the men are not caring enough and not sensitive enough and not, you know, uh, why we women are so sensitive. Is, is this... Um, an achievement when you are together with a woman that we have more the same desires and more the same sensitivities. Sensitivities, mm. yeah. Y yes and no. I think it really depends on like the person's what the person's been through, their their experience with their past relationships, how you know any kind of trauma that they're working through, any kind of issues that they're working through. All those things affect how you relate to another person. Um, okay. So you know, I've been in relationships with women who aren't really available and who aren't really that, um, you know, connected to their hearts or, or guarded in a certain way. And it doesn't matter if they're a man or a woman. It's just, you know, it's just kind of how they're coming into the world and what they're, what they're working on and what their lessons are and what they're learning. And so I know a lot, of, I have a lot of straight women friends who always say to me, oh, you know, I wish my husband was more like you or more empathetic and, you know, this or that. But um, I don't think at that level it has a lot to do with gender. I just, you know, I just, I feel like it has a lot to do with background and makeup um, and lessons to be learned and, and, and individuals' work to be done at a certain level. So um, I feel like we go through the same, you know, the same relationship arc. We have the honeymoon phase, um, then shit gets real, and we're like, whoa, who is this person? <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know... If we're lucky enough to make it through that second stage into kind of just like this acceptance and what I call the sweetness of relationship, you know, where mm -hmm. um, you work through that, you know, you, you rub up against each other enough where you can kind of blossom into a more sweetness place and of acceptance and love and joy. I think all those stages of relationship are exactly the same. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I, yeah I, I, I think so, I think too. So too. I, 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 I learned, I learned a, little a little bit. bit. I'm, I'm, I'm hearing an echo. Hearing an echo. Uh, well, I'll keep going and see if it ends. There we go. Um, I I feel like um, it's like when I was with my uh, my second long term relationship, which was a twelve year relationship with you know I'm Greg uh, Kelly. You yeah 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 Greg. We love Greg. Greg. We love Greg. We still love Greg. Yeah, we and, love but Greg had been married to a woman for 12 years when we met. We were both in our mid 30s when we met, mm -hmm. and um, I had been in a, a previous relationship, which was um, we weren't that. We sort of were roommates, and you know, we just slept together and all of that stuff. But we were separate units. My, my first relationship through my 20s. When I met Greg, he was he taught me how to be in a relationship. And he feels like he was taught by his wife. I mean, and it was like mm -hmm. how to talk, how to be intimate. Make you know, I would travel. Uh, you know, with my first relationship, I would travel for a week and maybe call him once, just to <laughs> check in. You know, with Greg, that was not okay. You call every day. You know, <laughs> and you say I love you, and you talk about things, and you do things together, and you check in, and you spend time together, and you. You know, and that was news to me, you know, and I, I'm not sure I liked it. You know, <laughs> I felt a little suffocated by it uh, until I sort of got in the groove and I realized, okay. So, you know, there was uh, an intimacy that I had to learn, I got to say, and I'm, I'm not sure that that's not true of, of men, you know, just stereotypically. And the w woman generally teaches the man how to do that, you know, just to use the stereotypes. But Greg has, I mean, he, I always would think to myself that, you know, you know Greg, Kelly, he's, you know, he's a man's man, he's, you know, handsome yeah. and, you know, kind of, you know, you never know he's gay. Uh, yeah. But he still has the heart of a woman in a certain way. He mm -hmm. loves that connection, loves that intimacy. And I'm so grateful to him because he taught me what that was. And now in my current relationship, we're both there, my Current guy was married for many years, thirty some years. So we're we're well civilized. You know, we've been well <laughs> civilized by women. Uh, me indirectly, but uh, it's 
I think there's some truth to that. I do. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice. It's sweet. And in terms of, you know, um, you know, the, we have the polarities of masculine and feminine. And there's, you know, a lot of truth to that. It's an indestructible polarity that appears to be built into the cosmos. But what you realize, particularly as um, we get more and more complex, this is what evolution does for us. We just find more and more parts of ourselves. It's like turning up the Google map. You know, it's all of a sudden, what I thought was just a plane, there's mountains and there's textures and there's rivers and there's all this stuff in us that we didn't realize. So there's plenty of masculinity and femininity in all of us. We can still find that juicy polarity. It's not a problem, especially. And I think that's one of the reasons that, um, you know, the, the, the traditional sexual outlaws like homosexuals and transsexuals and uh, transvestites and all of the people who are outside of the, you know, 30-yard lines, um, they're not only um, accepted now, people want to know them. I mean, we all, we're all deeply curious about... You know, Caitlyn Jenner standing up there and under with her glamorous gown and her hair and her makeup and there's a penis under there. We all know it. It's like, wow. And yet there's something attract that there's we're very curious and attractive about that. Uh, and it's simply because we were bored. Humanity's bored. We're ready to move forward. We wanted we want a little more juicy, interesting, different. That's the engine of evolution. Is I think the, the greatest evolution engine of evolution is boredom. We just human hmm. beings won't tolerate it. Yeah, this is beautiful. What yeah. you say. boredom. Uh, wow. <laughs> you know. Yes. And to explore new things. And I think you yes. have described it so beautifully by being gay. You have explored a completely different way of being in the world. Mm -hmm. You were sort of forced to do it. Why we sort of can sit back and be a normal and, you know, we don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's really great that you are yeah. the pioneers in, in doing that, really. Yeah, really. and the only part that still I get mad about is when I think of gay kids in traditional, even modernist, and, you know, God knows that's most of the society. And I breaks my heart yeah. for 14-year-olds, 15-year-olds, 16-year-olds, yeah. that they can't experience what straight kids can, yeah. which is just that, you know, wild, open, crazy passion that we're feeling too, no yeah. doubt about it. Mm -hmm. But we have to sort of sit on it, and that pisses me off. I'm, uh, I, I'm thinking of a current issue in Washington State, <clears throat> which I know about because I have a a niece who lives there and she makes a lot of noise about this. Um, maybe it's going on elsewhere too. <clears throat> about the school system deciding that uh, children should be assigned gender according to their own desires, so to speak, rather than strictly by their anatomy. And mm -hmm. she is extremely upset with this. She's imagining all kinds of traumatic locker room encounters, you know, same sex showers, you know, and 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 I'm saying, but the children will have no problem with this, you know. Yeah. <laughs> this our 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 roles are so much more fluid these days. This is not going to be upsetting. Only Unless the, the adults say that is something yes, wrong, you know, yeah, children yeah. play with each other. If they are boys or girls, this is not a problem mm -hmm. when they are allowed to. Right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But these are things that happen in in, in the in the meme clashes, I guess. Yeah. 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 Well, and, you know, one of the um, things that David Data wrote a lot about this. You know, the first stage, second stage, and third stage of relationship. And there, there's a problem with that second stage where we want to think that everybody's the same and men and women are the same and, you know, everybody's equal. And it, we sort of want to, in some ways, squash the polarity between yeah. men and men and women. And uh, that, you know, you just want to be aware of that, that we don't want, that we want to let little boys and little girls be, we just, we just basically want to get curious about who is this little precious being. Just get curious about that, and they'll show. If as long as you love them and are curious and accept, they'll show you who they are. Oh my God! And what a great gift for yeah. a kid. 
no matter who they turn out to be. And I think that that can even be fluid. You know, I, there's part of me who doesn't want a little kid to be identified as gay too early. You know, I, I want them to be able to experiment. I want them to be able to put on the clothes and do, try everything. But, you know, this, we're mysterious beings and just dripping with meaning and karma, yeah. you know. And we want to, you know, love that about each other, make that our practice. Yeah. I think that's one of the best things we can do for children growing up now is really just allowing them to unfold in their own natural progression and to express their their essence in whatever way is most true of them and to not get in the way of that and to not try to mold that and to not shape that or um, you know judge it or even qualify it with good or bad or right or wrong or any of those things and just really um, give children the like a wide field opportunity to find out who they are. And yeah. I think that's one of the most loving and radical things we can do right now for children growing up, especially around sexuality. Yeah. Yeah, but who is has the disadvantage to live in a family who does not that things? Are you aware if there are um, groups or help groups for for these uh, children, children or young people? Yeah, I mean, what I've noticed, uh, and I'm in Boulder, so I'm in a very privileged. Um, place to be gay, <laughs> um, just to own that, because it's true. Yeah. Um, it's one of the reasons I'm better. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> a lot of school systems here are now having um, gay alliance, gay support groups, um, groups for people of fluidity, sexuality. Um, sexuality is becoming part of the curriculum. It's, it's, it's part of um, like your everyday school program. Um, and children are now identi are, are identifying as fluid. They're identifying as pansexual. I know I've heard uh, just last weekend I was talking to uh, Ara Davis, who's 12. Marcy and Stuart Davis is little, not even little, just she's like a teenager now. It's amazing. Um, her, she's got some friends who identify as them, you know, and so exploring that conversation with her and just really yeah. talking about, you know, what that means. And so kids are like super what turned off. What does it mean? What does it mean? I don't understand that. I have never met this word. Them. Them. Yeah. Them. Ah, okay. I understood yeah. them. <laughs> okay. So, you know, not man. Not ma You know, maybe not a, a man or a woman or masculine or feminine, but them. Uh -huh. You yeah. know, as a way to kind of hold the full spectrum. And so kids are, are being turned on to this and, and coming to their own self identity. Ten, eleven, twelve, and that is is beautiful and so surprising to me and. Um, I think it's just great and a little bit shocking because, like, that was not how I grew up. And so yeah. it's very inspiring and it just touches my heart. And so I feel, you, I feel a lot of you hope. You both have hoped to, that this could could happen by, by, by living your life and coming out as that mm -hmm. and doing all the courses you have prepared. As, as Ken says, the grooves, you have opened the grooves. That's for, true. Yeah. Yeah. And you see it in culture. Um, there's a movie that's just been released here in the States called Deadpool, which is a superhero movie. And, of course, superheroes, this, this comic book is basically red. You know, these, super, these power gods is what they are. Well, this one is um, pansexual and mm. with men and women. And, um, and this has been a big uh, success in the comic book world. So you get adolescent, young adolescent boys which is generally the comic book reading public, um, reading this sort of thing, and, and they like it. They, they want more. They, you know, this has become a very uh, huge uh, franchise in, in the States, and we're, just, and we're just seeing that more and more um, in all kinds of ways, and not just in terms of sexuality, but in terms of gender and how people dress and how, you know, sort of the freedom they give themselves to, um, I, I was just, I, in fact, I posted it on my website. I was so impressed by it. A new commercial from Axe. And Axe is, um, does, um, you know, deodorant and shampoos and stuff for men. And they've always, you know, they're, they're a long-term brand. And, and like all of these things, that, you know, men's grooming products, it's all about the big chest and it's all about the man and it's all about, you know, having this woman and having the women swoon over them and all of this good stuff. And this new commercial 
um, the, the tagline is "Find Your Magic," and it mm -hmm. shows men with six packs. It shows men with just. It shows a guy with high heels. It's showing all these different ways to be a man, and it says, "I forget what the tagline is, but why do that thing when you can do your own thing, or something like that?" And that's astonishing to me. You know, the, these are people who are marketing. You know, men's grooming products are, are sold to 18 to 26 year olds. You know, for the men, for the most part, that's what they're after, and that that's how they're doing it. It's a new world. It's just a new world, and it's happening right before our eyes. Uh, evolution is, it's, it, particularly on, on this track, is moving so fast it's astonishing. Yeah, I'd agree. Yeah. It's shocking. Yeah, it is. It is. And, um, yeah. And, I love it. And exciting. I do, too. I do, too. It's, <laughs> um, it's a wonderful thing. It makes me want to ask, you know, where are we going? You know what? Yeah. What is going to uh, unfold yet, or unfold next, <clears throat> in this world of sexuality, and mm -hmm. in terms of uh, identity, uh, in terms of what is still taboo? You know, t has yet to come out and become public. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Yeah. Any guesses? Huh. Well, I think it's you know it's 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 th that idea that everybody gets to be who they are and and gets to explore anything that they want, and um, I think that's where where we're going and and you know there's always a little danger in that um, be because when you let all the rules down, um, then you know there's you can descend in sort of a chaotic red place where it's just about what feels good in this moment, and I do that, and you know, yeah. the rest of the world be damned. And and that's I don't think that's where we're going. That's that that's how the sexual revolution looks to people who are a traditionalist. Is it doesn't look like progress to them. It looks going back to like Bathsheba and that kind of stuff. <laughs> so, uh, but but actually, as long as this um, continues to unfold in ways where we respect and love each other and that what we're doing uh, takes place in a container of that uh, where we really love each other uh, then I'm good I'm good with it <laughs> you know, I, I bring it on you bring sure? it on and I think that's where we're going I think yeah. we're going in I think the sacred world to come is coming fast and this is part of how we get there Oh, Jeff, I love your inspiration and your positive outlooks you always bring into the world. This yeah. is, I, I felt it really in my body when you were speaking. Also, yeah. I missed a little bit when we fell out, but this is why I, I love your transmission. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. It's, it yeah. just, it's, it's just how I see it, and I'm so grateful. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so grateful, grateful to have found integral theory, mm -hmm. which helps me to understand it. I mean, yeah. I don't know where I'd be without it. It's just um, the whole thing. It feels like it's like Ken says. It's psychoactive. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there's something about it that once you sort of get the download, it's like, wow, what a mm -hmm. you know, whole new world there. Yeah. It's. Yeah. I think everybody who has deeply con gone into integral theory has had the same experience. Finally, yeah. I understand what I have intuited in some way, but we couldn't get any words uh, to it, you know, yes. and now we have words for it. Yes. And it's really great that by doing your your transmissions, for instance, we try to do it with our transmissions. Then there is the integral conference in, in Hungary soon, and there are all other uh, integral, integral living room and whatever it is, which is coming out and helps to to do that, to to unfold mm -hmm. into the public these not only different ideas, I would say it, and to talk a little bit with Margarita's terms, the energy, fill the energy with different vibrations and I'm very grateful that you do that, mm -hmm. that you both came to, to help us to do it because we alone, yeah. you know, we can blah, 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 <laughs> but then sooner or later it's boring uh, and nobody no. would listen to us. I hope. Maybe Kelly has some thoughts about where we're going too. Yeah, What's I think um, I just think the container for exploration 
and not just around sexuality, but um, all parts of ourselves. It's just getting wider and bigger and fuller. And um, I think with that, we're just going to see a lot of new identities crop up, a lot of new terms, a lot, uh, a lot more gradation. And I feel like after that moment, I think, I think there's going to be some structures that are going to come back in to kind of really hold and contain and ground that that um, that exploration and that container, you know, and just a uh, just in a just ground it because right now, you know, it's it's loose and it's it's chaotic and it's fun um, and it's expansive. And whenever you have an expansion, you're always going to have a contraction. So I really feel like after this this container of exploration and this more expansive moment. Um, a lot of new identities are going to come into form, which are then going to help kind of ground this experience and not necessarily have rules, but I think create a structure for, for everyone to kind of sink into more. And that's, those are just the senses I get about where we're going. Yeah, I agree with that, Kelly. I, I, it, it's almost a polarity in and of itself. You know, exactly, sort of yeah. freedom and then the structure and, you know, God bless both, you know. <laughs> yeah. You, know, you want both of those. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, this is wonderful. Yeah. It's such an amazing time to live in. Yeah. Also, it's some ways also frightening sometimes. Yeah. No? All the uncertainty yeah. we have to, <laughs> to, to, to live with. And the dollar is falling. The dollar is falling. The dollar is falling. Please. How about Margarita? I uh, wonder. You've been listening, uh, Margarita. I wonder if you have any observations, you know, from your slightly removed uh, perspective. At first, to say that we are very grateful. You saw we oh, fell yeah. out several times, so that you hold the space for all of us. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, it's amazing because. When when uh, uh, Jeff and, and Kelly was talking, I felt like uh, there's two things. Uh, the sexuality in normal people, they don't get to explore it as you do because mm -hmm. there is so much repression, repression uh, on, especially for women who uh, has to perform inside of a relationship and then they, they don't have really anywhere to go to to get help with that because it's so shameful. Yeah. At least with, with, with if you're gay, you have a, a stronger urge to actually claim it because it's so much more painful and uh, I think uh, and the society is pressuring you. Yeah. So I want to mention is something else too. Uh, I'm an intuitive healer, and if you are different from other people, uh, you will always find that okay, this is like woo woo, right? This is like this, and this is not normal. And I, I came to think of the Inquisition and you know the burning of witches and stuff like that, which I have experienced in a past life uh, sometime. Uh, really vividly, um, maybe this is coming to mind from other people, but uh, there are other groups of people who also are minorities who has a, an incredible struggle. So uh, we're not alone. I think that on the planet, if we can have compassion, and um, understanding about the ones who are different from us, then there there will be a better world. So that's my final word. Yeah. Mm. Well, well said. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we wow. are coming in okay. for the hopefully doing the closing. We yeah. invite all. Yes, they went out, and I I I locked off the. Um, the link to the blab, which is in 15 minutes, I think. Um, so, uh, are you back? So, thank you very much, everybody, and then we'll see you next time. Yeah, yeah thank you so, so, so much, so much. Yeah. And for your patience with That's our great. disappearance, continuous yeah. <laughs> disappearance. <laughs> Maybe they liked us being away. <laughs> yeah, hey. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, thanks bye so bye much, Kelly. Thank you very much. Much love. Bye. Bye.